Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Well, as you can see from the video title, this is about using Marlin firmware for the foam cutter. Now, up until recently, uh, you needed to have a Windows PC uh, to drive the foam cutter. And I'd had a few guys in the past ask me, was there any way we could use it without uh, having to have a PC attached, a bit like a 3D printer, where you just put an SD card in you know and uh, it runs a code and i thought it may be possible but I, I hadn't really looked into it too much and then recently i upgraded my 3d printer uh, which is just sat alongside us here and uh, to use a marlin 2 firmware and some uh, a new extruder and when i was looking through the configurations there was a configuration there for foam cutter and just the day before a guy had asked me whether you could use it like a foam cutter so uh, initially I told him no but then I started looking and I sort of uh, emailed him back saying I, I think it may be possible and uh, so as you can see from this video it, it, it is possible but it's taken quite a lot of work to get it to uh, work properly and I'm indebted to the help of a, a user on GitHub uh, called uh, De Andre I think um, it was mainly help with the uh, getting the display right because the display for a 3d printer uh, if you've if you use a 3d printer uh, wouldn't work for the foam cutter so that was where most majority of the work was so uh, yeah it took a while to do it and you know I like a challenge so uh, and you may have seen the video I put up previously just showing it all working so this video is going to be how to configure it all and what you're going to need to get it to work so I hope you find it interesting um, so what we'll do is we'll get on and show you what you're going to need in the way of hardware and software and then we can crack on uh, installing the software and firmware and then uh, then we'll get on to finally uh, at the end of the video we'll show you a demo of it working and if you stick around to the end of the video there's a little clue to what one of my next projects might be so you know if you know what it is you know just drop it in the comment so i know you've watched it to the end so we'll get on with the first section of the video of uh, the software we're going to need and the hardware. So what we're going to look, look at in this section guys is the hardware and when I mean the hardware I mean the hardware in the electronics uh, side of it. The, the, the hardware for building the actual foam cutter is covered in some of my other videos and the hardware is virtually the same it's just um, using uh, different firmware and software to drive it. So if you're looking to build the, home, the whole foam cutter then look at them videos and then if you're wanting to do it this way then come back to this video. So what you're going to need, so you can run this with an Arduino with a ramps board on, on top of it. Like here we've got a genuine Ar with Arduino there and that's a ramps 1.4 board there. So you can use the MKS Gen L boards as well uh, but I haven't actually tested on MKS Gen L uh, boards yet because I don't have a spare one both of mine are in use at the moment but uh, there should be no reason why it shouldn't work on there and in theory it, sh it should work on 32-bit boards as well but you'll need to dive into the firmware a bit more you know to look at that so all I'm going to show you today is how we can use the the ramps board and the, the MKS board is virtually the same uh, you know configuration wise so what you're going to need you're going to need an Arduino and this is the Arduino Mega 2560 so it, ha it has to be this for the, to get the four axis working okay and then on top of it we've got the ramps board this is a 1.4 ramps board I'll just show you underneath there there we go so that's the 1.4 ramps board and then what we're going to need as well for this and you can see we've already got one configured up here you're going to need an LCD um, this is what they call the uh, the 12 um, the 1 to 8 64 LCD um, and this has got the push button on it and in the side there it's got the slot for the SD card so that's where we put our G code in when we're ready ready to run it and uh, and you, you can normally buy this as a whole setup from some of the vendors. Um, 
And what you also get with this LCD, you get this little adapter that sits on the top there. So that plugs in and then the two cables for the LCD plug in. And on the MKS board, I th those are already built on them, I'm pretty certain. So, uh, so, so that's what you're going to need for the actual boards themselves. Then you're going to need some drivers for the board. Now, you can do it with external drivers, but for this video, I'm just going to cover the onboard drivers. Um, I've got a video on using external drivers and the procedure would be more or less the same for that anyway. So we've got two drivers here. Um, we've got the, the old uh, A4988 and then we've got the we've got the DRV uh, 8825s. Now there are other drivers you can use, uh, TMC drivers, but I, to be honest I've never used any of them guys, these are the only two I've ever used and for the foam cutter they were absolutely fine. I don't think there's any major benefits and but some guys have used them and says you know they did notice a difference in noise so I think that's probably the major difference. So that, that's the hardware you're going to need. Um, a cooling fan you're also going to need as well. Uh, that, you want that mounting over the um, drivers there just to keep them cool. And then you're also going to need a power supply. Now for the ramps board you want a 12 volt power supply. I've got one here just out of shot. Um, it's quite a, an old big one but it's a, it's a good 12 volt power supply. Uh, for the MKS board you can use a 24 volt power supply as well as a 12 volt. Now if you're intending doing um, so if you're intending using a hot wire longer than about a metre, then I'd advise you to go for the MKS board with a 24 volt power supply. But the ramps works absolutely fine up to about a metre on 12 volts. But once you go above that, and it depends a little bit on your wire as well, if you use thicker wire, um, that's going to want more current and power. So ideally what you want to use is um, over a metre use the MKS with 24 volt, under a metre the, the ramps board works absolutely fine and, and I've cut many wings with that with no problems at all so uh, so that's that's it in the electronics hour um, you're also going to need some stepper motors um, I've only got two here at the moment because all my other stepper motors are in use so these are just two spare ones I've got kicking around these are NEMA 17s uh, which plug directly onto the uh, board there and for the foam cutter, if you build it as on the website, they work absolutely fine. That's what I'm running at the moment on, on the foam cutter, as you'll see later. Um, and all we need then is some cables to connect up to the uh, ramps board. And they just plug into uh, different slots uh, underneath there. Let me just turn that. There we go. So that's all we really need in, in the way of um, hard, hardware. The only other thing, and I do get this question a little bit as well, is on the ramps board, you'll notice the connector on there. There's two power supplies. You need to supply power to both sides because the other side powers the the hot wire which comes off the which comes off the D8 connector just there. So if you're going to use a separate um, supply to run the um, hot wire, uh, some guys do that. Uh, you wouldn't need to plug in the uh, in the D8, uh, the second power supply for the D8. It runs these these MOSFETs here, which are the which are the high current drivers. So, uh, but basically, all I've done, you can see on the power supply here. Uh, get you up closer to that. I've just looped it across so that we've got um, we've got the power going to both connectors so when that plugs in it's powering both sides so I'd recommend you do that anyway because it, it, it doesn't hurt to do it anyway. As far as cables go um, these are probably not going to be long enough so you you'll have to use you'll have to extend your cables and as you'll see later when we come on to doing the uh, homing test, um, what, what I recommend you use there is screen cables because you can get um, problems if you don't use screen cables. 
So uh, I think that's it as far as hardware goes. The only other things we have to do, we have to set the micro step in, which is via these little jumpers here. And I've got a video showing you how to do that. And the other thing we have to do, we have to adjust the stepper driver current um, to match the motors. And so I have got other videos that show you how to set the stepper driver current um, to match the stepper. So I'll, I'll not go, go over that in this video because it will just make it too long. And the process is exactly the same. You know, we just uh, put the steppers in and then uh, adjust the current. Now, the only thing that's different on the Marlin setup is, as you, could, as you might be able to see here, we've got the drivers in these sockets. So that's the X socket, that's the Y. And these two are referred to as E0 and E1. That would normally be the Z or the Z socket. So with this firmware, we're using X, Y, U and V. So we don't use the, uh, the Z uh, socket at all. So, you know, don't, don't put anything one. It's a good idea not to put one in there anyway, because normally when you get these, you get five drivers and then you've got a spare there in case you, uh, in case you blow one up. If you have a look at that one, there's a big X underneath it. I've blown that one up, putting it in the wrong way. So, uh, yeah, so that's thing to, to make sure of is that you plug the um, stepper drivers in them sockets and then all the, the stepper motors go into the uh, connectors. What we'll do is um, once we get the software up and loaded I'll show you how it's wired up and then we'll do a, a little bench test. So the next thing we need to do is get the firmware onto the board so that will be the uh, next section and it's um, it's quite easy but if you're not familiar with compiling and uploading firmware you know if this is all brand new to you then I'll, I would probably recommend you use the Windows software. If you're familiar with 3D printers and doing firmware, then this should be probably second nature to you. But if you've not had any experience, then I, I probably wouldn't recommend using the Marlin setup. Um, you know, because uh, it, it, it normally works okay, but when it doesn't, it can be very frustrating. So we'll get on to look at the software next to get the firmware loaded up. So guys, the next thing we're going to do now is install the firmware. Um, now, as I said previously, if you're not familiar with compiling and uploading firmware to 3D printers, then uh, I would probably suggest you use the Windows version. But it's, um, if you're familiar with this, then it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, now, what we're going to need is we're going to need uh, some software, first of all. Now, the software I've used to do this is Visual Studio Code. And within that, there's two extensions for um, the Marlin firmware. And uh, I'm not going to actually cover installing them because a guy on YouTube called uh, Michael from Teaching Tech, now he does, he does really good videos and he's got a video there on how to update uh, Marlin firmware using Visual Studio Code and the auto build for Marlin. And it also uses something called Platform IO. Now, if I was to cover this in this video, it would make the video extremely long. So what I'll do is I'll refer you to Michael's video. And, you know, he does, if you're into 3D printing as well, uh, you probably know Michael and he does some really good videos, you know. Um, you know, I've, I've learned quite a lot from him as well. And uh, so go and follow his video on how to get the software installed. So what we're going to need, so we'll just uh, close Michael down. So the software we're going to need is Visual Studio Code, and all this is free software, guys. There's no cost involved in it. So we have Visual Studio Code, and if you look in the, the side there, we've got um, we've got the Marlin Auto Build there, and once I upload the um, the folder with the files in, you'll see that Platform IO is in there. Um, and it, it, I have tried doing this for the Arduino IDE, but I just ran into all sorts of problems. Because um, what the 
Visual Studio Code does with the platform IO and auto build, any libraries it needs, it downloads them automatically. So you haven't got to go around searching for that and wondering what all these errors mean. So first thing you're gonna need to do then is download the firmware. Now the firmware, I've got it on, on my GitHub site there and it's just uh, uh, github.com rc key and you go in the first video there if you go into the first uh, project there now this this project has been forked from um, a user called uh, uh, De, De Andre um, and he he's got a fork off the original Marlin firmware and it's for uh, I think it's to do with um, it's, it's called Marlin Pipette Bot not, I'm not quite sure what it does, but um, when I po posted some questions up on the Marlin fo forum about the display, he came back and he's given me a great deal of help. So, uh, you know, this project wouldn't have been possible without him. So um, that, that, that's, that's how it's been possible. So what you need to do then, if you're familiar with GitHub, you can just, uh, if you know about GitHub in that and, and Git, you can, you can uh, you can just clone the you know the repository but the other way to do it if you just go to code and then you download the zip so if you download the zip there and then put it in a folder somewhere on your computer and um, and then what we do then is unzip it uh, and I've got it let me just check where I've got it uh, yeah so I unzip mine into uh, documents, wrong documents, that documents, code. Uh, there we are, Marlin Phone Cutter, XYUV. So that zip file, I've expanded it to there. And then we've got a Marlin folder there. So once you've got that, on the computer and unzipped, what you can do then is go in and start Visual Studio Code and go to open folder. Uh, so I've already got it open here. So we want to go to uh, documents, code, and then that Marlin. So if we select that folder, And it loads it up there. Just taking it a little while to. You see at the bottom there it says platform IO, checking platform IO core install. So we should be there. And there's the platform IO icon there. So the two main files we've got are. That we do all our changes are uh, configuration advanced.h and configuration.h. Now, if you if your phone cutter is built the same as I've got here, then all the changes are already in them files. But um, you might have to go in there later on when we're doing access direction and homing. If things are not working correctly, we, we might have to come back in and change them. Um, but for now, all we want to do is to make sure we can compile the firmware. So all we do, we go onto this Marlin Auto Build and then click on the little hammer icon there. And then you'll see it comes up there. It says uh, use a specific environment for the build. The one we want is the Mega 2560. And what we're gonna do first of all, we're just gonna build it. Now, what you might find is the first time you run run this you might get an error to start with and the thing to do is just run it again because sometimes what it does it needs to download some libraries first and if it hasn't got them first time it can sometimes error so if it does error just try building it again so so all we do is we do a build then you'll see a load of stuff go off at the bottom of the screen there um, so it's just compiling the firmware and it's the scanning dependency. So anything it needs, it will it will download. Whereas the Arduino IDE doesn't do that. So it will come up with an error and you have to go in and uh, I just found it was more troublesome and uh, Visual Studio Code is really good. 
and Visual Studio Code will run on um, Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux as well. So it's not just a it's not just for Windows machines. The old laptop struggling a bit here, it's getting on a bit now. So it's uh, the first time through this. It does take it a while to compile. Um, but what you find, if you make changes, come back in, it doesn't always have to recompile the whole thing. So it, it does get quicker. Uh, so we'll just let that finish. And then what we'll do then, we'll then plug it in and put the code on. And so far it's looking good, we've got no errors. Now if you do get any errors, the thing to do with this is go back to the very first error because normally the other errors follow on from that. So you know, when it gets one problem, it just compounds the issue. So if you do get any errors, try and see what that error is. And the best thing to do is just copy that error. Uh, just Google it and see what it comes back with. Normally it's something quite simple. Um, the common thing is leaving out semicolons and you know, if you've made a change. So it's still going. I think we're not far off now. Yeah, there we go. So at the bottom there, we've got success. And uh, it's, it's built the actual hex file. So if, if that looks OK, the next thing we can do then is then upload it to the board. So what we'll do is we'll plug in the board and then so I haven't got it connected to the power yet so plug the it still lights up and actually this has actually got the firmware on anyway but we'll, we'll re-upload it anyway so uh, what we'll do now then all we need to do now is press upload. And that will detect which ports in use and upload it for you. Whereas the Arduino idea, you have to tell it which port. And this part normally doesn't take too long and the board should reset itself once it's There we go, it's it's writing now. And it's just verified it now by reading it back. There we are, and we should see the board. There we go. You can see that under there, it's, it's restarting. That's it, and that's the firmware on. So once it's on, let me just get this up a bit closer. Uh, zoom in a little bit. So that, that's the screen you should see um, with foam cutter ready. And then you can just go in and, you know, there's quite a few options there. So, so that's a firmware loaded up um, and working. So the main thing is to get the software on, uh, follow Michael's video on how to do that. He does a much better job than I could do anyway. And then download the uh, code from the, the GitHub site and there'll be links in the description for all this. And then once, once you've done that, and you've got no errors, then flash the firmware onto the board and uh, we should be good to go then. So what we're gonna do in the next section is just do a quick bench test to make sure uh, it's all working. So we'll connect the power supply up and then we'll disconnect from the computer and just make sure all the motors are working okay. So we'll see you in the next section. Right, so what we're gonna do now, we've installed the firmware, is just do a quick bench test and make sure it's it's working um, 
as we expect. Now, if, you, if you're gonna build a foam cutter, I suggest you do this first before you start actually making the main um, foam cutter itself. Because if you've ordered all this stuff and then put it to one side, build a foam cutter, then come back to it and find there's a problem, you know, you might have trouble with the vendors getting any you know, recourse with them. So I would suggest you do this first, make sure this is working as you expect, iron out any problems, and then, uh, then go on to actually build the foam cutter itself. And then, you know, when you come to this section, this works. And if there's something wrong on the machine, um, then it can only be either wiring or there's some configuration problem. So, you know, that's the best way to do it. So what you need to do first of all is do the uh, voltage reference and also set the micro stepping. Now this is set it to use one eighth micro stepping and I'll put some diagrams up to show you where the pins go. Um, and I'll link you to the video to do the voltage reference. So basically what we need to do is set the voltage reference to match the, uh, the stepper motor's uh, current. Uh, now there is a calculator on the website where you, it tells you what, for these two drivers, the, uh, the dr v 825 and the, uh, the a uh, 4988s. So these are the A4988s and that's the DRV 8825s. So um, one thing to be very careful of guys, make sure you get these in the right way. Um, you need to make sure you align the enable pins on, because if you don't, then what you do, you get like this one that I've shown you earlier. Um, you get the magic smoke. So make sure you line them up. Uh, I'll link you to the video to set the voltage reference um, and that's quite easy to do and then um, once you've got the micro stepping set the voltage reference uh, correct then we can uh, uh, do a bench test and uh, check that the, the motors are okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug in and on this uh, board here all I've done is I've just made a, a quick 3D uh, printed mount to put this on just so it doesn't um, short out on the back because if you look, if you look on the back of this spare one I've got here yeah you know, you've got um, you've got bare connections there and uh, and I did I did short it out once but it, it didn't damage it it just it just didn't like it very much so we're plugged in there these two wires now if you plug these ribbon cables in and you've got nothing on the display, it normally means you've just got them around the wrong way. So just um, swap them around the other way. It doesn't seem to do any damage plugging them in the wrong way. You just won't get anything on the display. And then what we'll do is we'll power on the machine. And there we go. So we're line up a little bit better. That's it. So that's all looking okay. We've got red light on the ramps board there. So what we want to do is test that each of the uh, axis work. Now, ideally I'd have four of these motors here, but I haven't got four. So what, what we'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just switch the power off because when you're plugging stuff uh, onto the board, you don't, you don't want any power on because you can cause problems by that. So we'll just knock the power off and then what we're going to do is we're going to plug the board in. Now, when we come onto the section where we're checking the axis direction, if you find the motor's going the wrong way, the easiest thing to do, might be easy to show you on this one here, the easiest thing to do is just to swap the cable around. So if we found the motor was going the wrong way and it's on like, make sure you're in shot there, if you found the motor was going the wrong way, the easiest thing to do is just take that off and turn it round. And I'll demonstrate that when we do the bench test as well. So, so uh, that's the easiest way to reverse the direction if, the, if you find the axis is going the wrong way. And we'll cover that later in the video. Um, if you can't do that, then you need to go back into the firmware and there's a setting we can change in there, which I'll uh, explain later in the in the video as well. 
So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug, just gonna plug the X and Y in to start with. So we'll plug in be careful getting these on because sometimes you can miss one of the pins when I was testing this earlier I got some funny noises out of out of this motor let's just zoom me back a bit so you can see so what I want to do is press the uh, press the button there and we've got info screen what we want to do is go to motion and then we want to go to move axis and then we're going to check the X and Y. What we'll do in a bit, we'll check the other two as well. So move X. Now, because we're not actually connected to the foam cutter, it doesn't match it, matter how many millimeters we tell it to move. Um, when we do the testing on the foam cutter itself, we'll, we'll use one millimeter, because if we've got things wrong and it goes off too much, um, you know, you can end up r ramming the uh, the foam cutter into the stops, which won't do it any good. Right, so go back to motion, move axis, move X. We'll go on to 10, and then as we turn the dial, we should see one of the motors running. There we go, so that's on the X, so that's move 10. And we go back to zero, it goes back to zero. So I've told it 80 there, which is going to be quite a lot. <laughs> then we'll, we'll go back to zero. So that motor's working fine. So we'll go back to move axis. move Y and then now we should get this one working you see that motor is a bit noisier that one a different size mode so that, that one's working so what we'll do we'll come back to the info screen, come up to the main screen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to switch off and I'm just going to go into the the other two drivers there. So this is our U and V. There we go, switch back on. Here we go, and we go on to motion, move axis. So we go on to U, 10 millimeter. There we go. So that's on the U. And then move axis, V, 10 millimeter. There we go. Right, so that that's all tested out okay. Now, for any reason that doesn't work, first thing to do is check your connections because it is quite easy to get one of these connectors missing one of the pins um, and you get some strange noises from the motor uh, if, it, if it works at all. Um, the other thing to do is if you've wired up the motor yourself, uh, it's possible you may have the pairs wrong. So you know, check the pairing of the wires uh, are correct. And I've got a video on showing you how to do some checking on the wires and I'll, I'll link you to that as well. So, um, so that's basically, uh, it's ready to go onto the, um, onto the foam cutter and do some testing. Now the other thing while we're here, we'll just have a quick look at the wiring as well. And I'll put some diagrams up as well so you can see.
So the other thing you might need to do is when you get onto the foam cutter, you might find that one of the axes is going in the wrong direction. So when we give it a positive number here, the, uh, the horizontal axis should come forward and the vertical axis should go up. Now, if you find it's going the wrong way, the simplest thing to do, and what we'll do, we'll just demonstrate it here. So if we're on the V axis here, let's just zoom out slightly. So I've got the V axis there. Now, if you look at the moment, it's going in a clockwise direction when I go positive. So I'll just turn it back to zero now. So when I go positive, we should go clockwise. So we'll just put that back to zero. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to switch off. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reverse this. So, so I'm just going to reverse this connection now so it's on the other way. Then we'll switch back on. So if you notice now here, uh, I don't think we can see it very well. Let's zoom down. You can see that the two red wires are opposite now. So let's go back out. Right, so now if I go into the V axis, so I've go to move axis, go to V, go 10 millimeters. So what we should find now, when I go in the positive direction, it should go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. There we are, it's, it's going the other way now. So that's the simplest way to change the axis direction. Um, now, some boards you can't do that with, you can't easily swap the wires around. If you can't do that, then what we have to do, then we have to do it in firmware. So we've got all the motors tested, now they're working. The other thing that we will need to connect up, and it's not necessary to use, but if you want to use homing with limit switches, then I'll just switch off here. I'll put a diagram up with this as well. So for homing, what we need to use for, for X is these two pins over here. So we use a ground and a signal. Then we miss one. Uh, uh, a I think the ground's a middle one, I think, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, for the Y. And then for the V, we miss one and we use the next one. Now, for the U, we don't use the next one. <laughs> what we use, we use pin D42 down here, which is one of these down here, but I'll put a diagram up to show you. And that is a signal pin. Um, don't go and put in a connector across any of these pins. So you need, you need to use D42, which I think is, is that one, I think. But I'll put a diagram up just to make sure. And then there's quite a few spare ground pins over here. So use the ground pins. Yeah, so these middle pins here are the ground pins and then the outer pins are the signal pins. So I'll put a diagram up to show you that as well, just to make sure. But I've had a few guys where they've got the, they've just bridged across these pins here thinking it's the same setup as up here, but it isn't. And then they can't get the access to home properly. So just be careful of that. Um, so what we'll do now, we'll actually go onto the foam cutter and get it, um, uh, plugged in and wired up and then we'll show you it working on the foam cutter So what we need to do on the foam cutters once we've got it in we need to check the axis direction do the calibration Check the homing uh, and as I said, you don't necessarily have to use homing, but you can if you want We'll do a dry run and once we've done the dry run when we'll do a live run as well just to show you it all working so uh, I'll see you on the foam cutter itself Right guys, so now we've got all the firmware installed and we've gone through the wiring. Um, I can't really show you the wiring here because it's tucked in behind here because I've still got my, my garble board here. Uh, so it's just sat in there, all connected up correctly. But um, as we saw in the previous section, how to connect it up, this is connected up exactly the same way. So um, even if I've got the camera in there, it'll just like a jumble of wires. So what so. we need to do now, we need to check the axis direction. So what that means is, is when we give a positive movement, the horizontal axis comes forward and the vertical axis go up. 
So we need to check that first to make sure we've got the things going the right way. Now if it's going the wrong way, there's a couple of ways to fix it. The easiest way is to reverse the cable, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the other way to do it is to go into the firmware. And I'll, um, what we'll do at the end of this section, I'll show you how to uh, do that in the firmware itself, but it does mean you need to recompile the firmware. Uh, ideally, if you can, it's easier to reverse the wiring. So what we'll do is we'll go in and check it first. So we'll power on. Right, so there we are, powered up. And all we need to do is go into the menu, go into the motion menu, move axis, we'll move the x-axis. So that's this one over here. And when we go into move X, we've got different distances we can move. Now I would advise you to start off with one millimeter first, because if, if it is going the wrong direction, it could go and crash into the stops. So one millimeter is not gonna move it very far, assuming we've got the steps per millimeter correct. So if we select one millimeter, and all we need to do is turn the dial in the positive direction for one millimeter, and just watch at the, the X axis. So that's, that's moved and it's come forward. And just to confirm it a bit more, we can give it a few more. So I've given it 17 there, as you can see, so that's come forward. And then all we can do then is go back. So we're back at zero now. So that's moving okay. Now what we need to do then is check each ac axis. So we'll go back to move axis. And then we'll check the Y. So the Y axis should be that one over there and that should go up when we move in. The, and again, use one millimeter. So if we do, so that's going up. So we'll give it a few more. So that's looking okay. Right, so then we can check the U, which should be this one. We'll do one millimeter. So that's come forward. Yeah, so that's working okay. Right, and then we'll go and check the V axis, which is this one. We'll go to one millimeter, and then we should find that should go up. And it does. And we'll move that back to zero. Yep. Now, the thing to do if you find one of the axes is going the wrong way, the, the simplest way to do this, and this is a spare ramps board I've got with a connector on, what we need to do is reverse the wiring. So you can see how it's connected on at the moment. If we found that, so that's on the X at the moment, if we found the X axis was going the wrong way, the simplest thing to do is just take that off and turn it around the other way. and that will reverse the direction. So that's the simplest way to do it. Now, on the MKS board, it's not quite as easy as that because the connectors are, I've got the, the plastic uh, insert that this goes into, but um, I have heard of people, you can just prise it off and push it on the other way if you want to. Now, if you can't do that for whatever reason, the other way to, to do it is to go into the firmware and we'll have to recompile the firmware. So what, what I'll do is, uh, now is I'll show you how to do that in the firmware. Uh, but what it will mean is we, we need to recompile and we'll, we'll need to re-upload re it to the, the ramps board or the MKS board. So if you find you can't swap the wires around on the uh, board, it may be because you've got an MKS board and it's not easy to swap round. Um, 
what you need to do then to change the axis direction is go into the software. Now on the website, I've got full details of how to do that and it shows you what to do. So what we'll do here, we'll go on to the, uh, on Visual Studio Code and you need to make the change in configuration.h. So if you find that file there and it was 14, there we go, 14.04 there. So what you need to do then, if you come, let's just get that one out of the way. So as you can see there, invert the step direction, change or reverse the mode to connect if the axis is going the wrong way. So all we need to do, if you've thought that the uh, X, so if the X axis was going the wrong way, you would do X direction and change that from true to false. Now, if you have a look down here, you will see we've got I and J. And you think, well, I haven't got an I and J, but internally the, the software refers to the, um, the extra axis because we don't have a Z, so that's been commented out. So the two lines there have been commented. But internally, the fourth and fifth, fifth axis are referred to as I and J. And it's because you can have loads of different letters for um, these extra axis. Sometimes they're A, B, and C. Sometimes they U, U, V, W. So it's uh, so what they've done in here is just use different letters. If you go look at the beginning of the file in the configuration of H, around about 182, it says regardless of these settings that it mentions above there, internally they are named I, J, K, U, V, W. So even though we're using U and V, internally they're known as I, uh, I and J. So what we do then, if we found that the the U axis was going the wrong direction, then we would change this one here, invert I, D, R, R, and we would change that to false. And if we found that the V axis was going in the wrong direction, then we would change that to uh, false as well. So uh, that's how you would change the axis direction. It's quite easy. The only problem now is we, we need to recompile the firmware and you would need to upload it again to the, uh, to the ramps board there for it to take effect. So it is, if you can swap the wiring around, that's the much easier way to do it. So in this next section, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to check the calibration. So that's to make sure that when we send the G code and the G code says move 100 millimeters, it moves 100 millimeters or whatever the distance is. What we need to make sure is that there's, if it's given a command to move a certain distance and it actually moves that distance. and it, the reason that could be out is because the steps per millimetre uh, could, could be uh, incorrect. So the way to check it, and I've done this on the uh, on the Garble firmware as well, and it's it's really accurate. And and from the wings that I've produced and that um, and the fuselages, it's come out perfectly accurate. Um, that I think in one of my other videos, I show you how how good the accuracy was by putting an aerofoil over um, a printout. Uh, and it was actually, uh, you couldn't see the lines, it was right on the lines. So, so this is a method I use. So um, ideally, if you can, it's better to use a bigger distance for calibration checks. Now, because of the filming restrictions I've got and trying to get the camera in, I'm only gonna do ab about 100 millimeters, but if you can, do as much as, as you can. So what I've basically done is I've just attached a pointer which is just a paper clip. And I've got it pointing at 50 there. And I've just put a little bit of tape on just to, so it highlights a bit better. Right, so we'll go on to motion, move axis, move U. We'll go on to 10 millimeter. So it's on 250 there. And I'm gonna tell it to move 100 millimeter. So it's actually auto home and it's at plus five. So, uh, We'll discuss the homing in the next section, but so what we what I need to do on here is move it to 105. And so hopefully it'll end up on the on the 150 if the draw slides don't stab me first. <laughs> So 
So if we just have a look at that. I think that more or less looks spot on. Let's just go back to five. And we should end up at the 50. I think that's more or less spot on. So just remember here, it's a foam cutter and the accuracy we get from this is more than good enough. Remember we're cutting foam and we don't have to be within a thousandth of an inch or a, you know, a, a tenth of a millimeter, you know, because you, you wouldn't see that on a piece of foam anyway. Right, so if we find it's wrong, what we do, we need to recalculate the steps per millimeter. So up on the website, there's a calculator there. So and I've given an example on the page on the website. So say for example, instead of moving 100 millimeters, only move 98, we would put that setting in. So put 100 in. I'll just show you this on the, uh, got it on my phone here at the moment. So this is on the website. So. The current steps per millimetre is 1066, that's the default. And then if we moved 98, then you can see there, the new steps per millimetre should be uh, 1088. So I hope you can see that okay. I'll put a better link up on the, in the video as well. So what we do then, we come into Configuration, Advanced Settings, and then you can see down there we've got Steps per Millimetre, we go into Steps per Millimetre and we've got all the axis there. Now the only thing with this firmware guys, you'll see there's a, there's a Z or a Z axis there, just ignore that. It's to do with the way the firmware has been compiled and the, you know, I couldn't find a way to get rid of that, that one there. This times out too quick as well. <laughs> So just to, oh, so it goes advanced settings, steps per millimetre, and then what we do is we go on to an axis there. So that said 1088, so it does, does take a while to do it. <laughs> there we go, 10. Ten eighty eight. And then what we would do then, we would then go and check it again um, and make sure that was correct. So run the same test again and, and check it. And if you found that was correct, if you switch the machine off now, it loses the setting. So what we have to do, we have to go into configuration and then we go into store settings. So if we switch the machine off now, so let's just switch it off. Power back on. If we go back into configuration, advanced settings, steps per millimetre, so we've got 1088 now. So that means when we power off, we're going to store our settings. Now I'm, I'm just going to set that back to 1066 because I know that's wrong for this setup. Back up to configuration and then store settings. So that's got the settings stored again now. So. So that's how we check the calibration. Now you can go and check it on each axis if you want to. Um, I've, I've found though, once I've got it right for one, it's right on the others, but uh, it, might, it may be a good idea to check it on each axis because you know, if you've got any uh, backlash or play in there somewhere, it'll probably highlight that as well. So, so that's how to check the calibration. Right guys, so in this next section, what we're gonna be doing is 
checking to see if the homing's working correctly. Don't do the homing until you've got the uh, axis direction working correctly and ideally the calibration, although it's not entirely necessary for the calibration, you know, if you think it's somewhere near. But so to test it, all, all we do is we switch on the switch on the foam cutter. And all we do is we go into motion. Now, if you have a look here, we've got auto home. And if we just go down the, we can home each axis if we want to. But the one you'll probably want to use more than that is, is um, auto home. So if we do auto home, so we start with the X. Then we're doing the Y. Then we're doing the U. And then the V. Now oh, that didn't work right, did it? Well guys, as you might have seen then, when we came to home the uh, the V-axis, instead of it homing, it w it kept going up. Um, and I thought, and I'd had homed it earlier on today, this machine, so I thought, what's going on? So what's happened is, because I've got this just rigged up temporarily down here, uh, the the wires for the uh, V uh, limit switch had just popped off the ramps board. That's why it's going up. So I just popped it back on. So if you've, if you've gone through the homing and we found that the one of the axes is going the wrong direction, uh, we can't we can't swap the wires around on the uh, on the ball because it will make no difference. It would change the axis direction then. So the only way we can do this is to go inside the firmware and change a setting to, to invert the homing direction. So we do that. Um, let's just go down a bit. Section homing. There we go. And it's round about line 1446. Um, and all we have to do, uh, we have to change the setting from either a, a one or to a minus one. Now I find during my testing that um, it was all, uh, all at minus one worked fine. You can see there we've still got the Z defined there, but uh, we're not using a, a Z in this, so it, it, it doesn't really matter. So if we found that say the uh, the V was going the wrong direction, then what we do, we would change that to one and then we, we would compile and that again. Now the only problem, if you can't swap the cables to do the axis direction, you might find you're doing this twice. So um, if you have to go in and compile the firmware to change the axis direction, then you'd need to ch then check your homing direction as well then. If you found that wrong, you've got to come back and compile it again. But that's how to do it in firmware. Um, and I found that the homing wasn't a problem. So what we'll do is we'll just home it again. We'll do an auto home. So they were working as, as they were. And now we should see the V-axis go back down. The, the, the two most common problems is, the, uh, is either a broken connection or if you get some strange sort of um, things going on, you know, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. It's usually due to not having screen cables. And I have got screen cables in here. So, uh, the, you know, this doesn't have any problem with the reason you get that is because what happens is with these um, stepper motors, because they um, they generate a lot of uh, EMF uh, or back current, if you like, or back voltage, and that can cause um, spikes in the wires and the the um, the limit switch wires can 
or, or that like an aerial for that and pick pick the uh, signal up and cause some problems with homing. When I first set homing up on this machine on the garble software, I did have that problem. Um, it was only on one axis, but then I switched to string cable and it worked absolutely fine. So if you do find you're getting strange results, first thing to do is screen cable and then make sure all, all your wires are connected. Um, now unfortunately on this software it's not easy to test whether the uh, limit switches are working. On the garble software with the Windows software you can trigger the switch and see what's happening but uh, because this is just running on a little LCD it's, it's not that simple. So, so, that, so that's the homing uh, done. Right guys, in this section, which I've already done without switching the cameras on, <laughs> so we'll try again. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a dry run now. Now the reason for doing a dry run is to make sure that the accelerations and that uh, are okay. Well, when I first set this going, I found that the, the speed of the, um, the stepper motor was far too fast. And, uh, and it spent, I took, took a, a little while to get the settings very similar to the garble firmware. So if you're using this type of setup, you know, same threaded rod, stepper motor and everything, then the settings in the firmware should work, uh, should work quite well. If you're using different settings, then you'll probably have to tweak with the acceleration and the velocity in the, in the menu, which we have. So if we go into um, configuration, advanced settings, so we've got acceleration, uh, so we've got velocity, and then so we've got five there, and again ignore the z-axis there, I couldn't get rid of that in the firmware, and then acceleration there, so we've got we've got maximum x, y, and u. So what you might have to do is you might have to play around with them settings. So uh, let's go back out of that. So I've just honed the machine. So what I normally do, I normally put a piece of foam down and then another piece on. Uh, but as you can see, the wire is, is behind uh, and it's too low. So what we need to do is adjust the wire. So if we had a piece of foam, so let me get a piece of foam to show you. So if we was cutting this here, I think this is the one I did on, is that one I did there? No, a different one. <laughs> so what we want, we want the the wire just to be level with this uh, piece of foam here that's supporting our main piece of foam. So what we need to do then, we go into motion, uh, move axis, and I'm going to bring the X and Y forward a little bit. Sorry, the X and U forward a little bit. So just do 10 millimeter. I'm going to bring it f forward to 15, and then the Y. That's no, sorry, the U. Bring that forward to 15. So that's brought it forward a little bit. Now we need to go up, probably about probably about 10 on there as well. So let's. So we go to the. Y. We might need to do another bit there. Let's go 25. Yeah. 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 That's looking about right now. Though. It's just on the one. So now we've got the, the Y in the right position. We need to zero the axis now. So we go up onto the main menu and we go to this bottom menu here, set, move, axis to zero. So all we're going to do is zero all the axis now. Zero all, yes. And then you see now we've got zero on the display now. So now we've got that, we can run the cut job. So cut from media. So we're doing this Clark Y X Y U V, and this is what we're going to actually cut. In. So we're do, doing this dry run without any power onto the wire, just to make sure 
it looks reasonable when it's cutting. And then if we're happy with that, then what we can do then is we can actually put some foam in and, and cut it out. So there we go. While you're watching that, I'm just gonna make a cup of tea. So there we are guys, that's the dry run done. So that's what it was actually cutting, was that. So what we're gonna do now guys is test the hot wire. Now this is a little bit of trial and error and you're gonna, it's gonna depend on um, the wire you're using, uh, whether you're using a ramp board or an MKS. Uh, my MKS board runs at 24 volts on the Garble software, but the, uh, the ramp board running the Marlin firmware is, is running on 12 volts. So I've got two power supplies under the desk here, um, a 12 and a 24. Now, for my setup here, my wire's not very long and the 12 volt ramps does work quite well. And that's what actually cut this out. So what we need to do then is go into the hot wire control. And you can see where we've got hot wire power and what I found on this setup here, 60% was a good uh, setting. So what I'm gonna do is turn that to about 60%. And then switch the hot wire on. So hot wire's on. I don't know where you can hear it. You can just hear a slight little noise, like a little singing, if you like. So what, we sh what should happen now, if we, uh, I'm trying to on the end bit here. We should find that, yeah, and that goes through there very easily. Probably not got the best angle there, but you can see the. There we go, it's still stuck to the wire. It's just so that's the sort of power you need in the wire to get a good cut now what i'll do is i'll show you the the video of it cutting this out but what i did before that i ran some tests and i made sure the wire wasn't dragging so what what you don't want to see is if you look down on top of the wire is this that's cool now what you don't want to see is when the wire's in the foam you don't want to see it dragging it wants to be straight all the time so if you see it's not straight, you, you've either got not enough power going to the wire or you're running it too fast and you'll find the cuts will be very poor like that. So what you need to do is, is, is run a few tests. And it, it does take a while. It took me quite a while to find ideal settings. But once you get some settings, what I tend to do is write them down and the type of foam I'm using. So this foam here, although it, it's, it's sort, of, uh, sort of a gray black color, it's actually just normal polystyrene. So if you, you just have a closer look at it there, you can see it's, uh, this comes from our local DIY store in the UK called B&Q. And uh, I actually quite like the color of it as well. It looks a bit better than, uh, than white. Um, one of the models up here, you, know, you may have seen the, the Terra wings, which I, I still haven't finished yet. So that's all been done in that foam. So that's, that looks quite good in that. And all I'm gonna do is laminate this. Uh, I'm not gonna color it at all and see how it goes, but that's, uh, that's on my to-do list. <laughs> so now the dry run's complete, guys, and we've tested our wire. And as I said, you might have to do this a few times. And if you look on the website, I've got uh, uh, some code there for testing the kerf value. So the kerf is the amount of um, foam that's melted by the wire. So that will give you a, a good indication of what sort of power you need. So have a look on the website and that it's called, I think it's called how to get a good curve value. So uh, have a look at that. 
and then do lots of tests first. Don't commit a good piece of foam until you're happy that the, the wire's running through the foam without dragging and then uh, and it's not burning too much away. The, the, the other end of the scale is that you've got a massive curve value and then you'll find that the, it doesn't come out the size that you want. So, uh, uh, so that's a dry run now. So what I'll do is now is I'll show you the video of it doing the cut of the swing. Uh, I'm not going to do it again because it's already been filmed so we'll, we'll show, show you that. <laughs> So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. So I hope you found that uh, useful. Um, the, the main reason for the video, as I said at the end in the introduction really, was that I do get a few guys that want to be able to use uh, foam cutting without having to rely on a, a Windows PC. And some guys don't have their foam cutters in sheds and that, and they don't want to leave a PC or a laptop out there running it. So so this is a, um, this is a good option. Now, as far as the cut goes, the cut doesn't seem to be any different than using the garble software because it's, it's the G-code that uh, really is the, the crux of foam cutting, um, you know, getting the correct G-code. So um, both garble and the Marlin firmware are running that G-code absolutely fine. Now, as I said at the beginning, there's a few disadvantages with using the Marlin firmware. One of them is, is what is called G93. Um, that's an option that DevWing Foam 2 uses and it's it's really good for swept back wings you know when you've got the root and the tip um, that are different in size but if you're doing fairly straight wings it's not it's not too important so uh, and the other thing is you don't you, you haven't got a, a display to look at now potentially you could set up Octoprint uh, I have Octoprint running on my 3D printer so potentially you could set up Octoprint uh, so uh, you know, if any of you guys want to try that, you know, then give that a try. I, I don't think I'll go down that route because for me personally, the garble side with the Windows software uh, works really well for me. And, uh, but I will, um, I will use this occasionally because it, it was a good challenge and it works really well. And once again, many thanks to the uh, user on GitHub. Uh, I think his username is, uh, is I'll put his name up, I'm probably going to... Uh, make a right mess of his name but it's called I think it's Der Andre or 
Victor Andre is, he gave me a lot of help on getting the display correct on here. And uh, you know, without his help, this, this project wouldn't have been possible. So many thanks to him. Um, so thanks for watching guys. You know, if you find it um, useful, you know, let me know. And uh, you know, keep a watch out for the next video. And again, if you've got any questions, uh, you know, to do with this, you know, just drop us a line via the comments or the website and I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. So catch you in the next video.